Now, obviously, AJ and Garnu is going to take a lot of headlines, and rightly so. But my God, Jile Zhang against Joseph Parker is a brilliant match up. When you look at the wins that both guys are coming off, you know, Jile Zhang doing some really good work recently. You go all the way back to another Saudi card, obviously, when AJ fought Usyk in the rematch. Jile Zhang, a lot of people thought he was uh, desperately unlucky to not get the decision and get the nod over Hergovic in that fight. We look at the fact that Hergovic is now mandatory for a world title. Joseph Parker, maybe after the fights he had over in the UK against AJ, where he looked a little bit gun shy against Dylan White, where again, he looked gun shy and sort of only really started to believe in himself when the fight was already probably gone away from him. A lot of people thought that we'd never see him at the top of the division. And it goes to show at heavyweight, one fight can flip everything on its head. And now these two guys, and it's commendable for the Saudis and Turkey for being able to do this because both guys have a, a credible sort of cause to say they could be in line for a world title shot, but they're putting it all on the line, facing each other. How initially do you see that fight going between those two? I think Parker deserves a fucking medal, right? Because mm. no one wanted to fight Deontay Wilder. He was one of the most feared men in boxing. All right, Fury did what he did to him. But still, Fury was seen as the only man who could take the punch, the only man who could come through that level of firepower and still be smiling at the end of it. And Parker got in there with him and we gave him credit. I'd go as far as to say that maybe Zhang is even more of a fighter that fighters do not want to fight right now because it's not even just that he's massive, powerful, and a good boxer, but he's a fucking awkward fucker as well because he is Southpaw as well, right? Yeah, Southpaw. So, so you, you then throw that into the equation. Parker is doing the dirty work right now. He's the clean-up guy of the heavyweight division. He's taken on everyone, including Joe Joyce, who no one really wants to fight. So I've got to give massive respect to Parker. That being said, what happened with Joe Joyce is still in the back of my head. Mm. And everything Joe Joyce can do to you, Zhang can do and then some, in my opinion. So mm. this is a fucking hard fight for him, I believe. Mm. But then he's off the back of a career best performance, arguably. So, you know, maybe this is the new and improved version. He's been clearly working really hard. And uh, in his last few fights, he's, he's definitely made the adjustments. So. Mm. I think we all understand that in boxing stars make fights, but I think the... The time it's brought to our, our conscience the most is in the heavyweight division because the way that fights end can often be more memorable, more eye-catching and a yeah. lot more brutal, right? And I think that it'd be very easy to look at the way that Joe Joyce pretty much did walk through and dismantle Joseph Parker, although he had success in that fight. He got rid of him. And then you look at Joe Joyce against Zhang and go, okay, well, well Zhang beat Joyce. And, and Joyce beat Parker, so Zhang beats Parker. I really don't think it's that simple. I it's rock, paper, scissors, boxing. I yep. always say this. It's never two plus two equals four. It's always just because you've got that one thing that beats this guy, someone else can come and get beaten by him and then come and beat you. It is like that. And mm. maybe you're right. I mean, do you see that fight going towards Parker's favour? I, uh, yeah, I'm calling... Is it an upset? Would it be a massive upset if Parker won this? I, I think it's 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 close, but because of what you've just said, the 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 boxing math would suggest Zhang should win. Yeah. So if that is the case, I'm gonna call the upset on this one. And and actually, I, I'd spoke about this on the channel before. Um, Zhile Zhang gets a lot of love, man, from the public, and rightly so. Like, what's not to like about Zhile Zhang? I'm I'm definitely on the Zhang hype train, but stylistically, when I break down this fight. I look at Zhang's performances and the notable ones, the best ones we've seen him, have all been against guys with slow feet. Hergovic has slow feet. Hergovic has slow feet. Hergovic cannot move around a yeah. ring like Joseph Parker. Hergovic probably possesses maybe double the amount of power that Joseph Parker has. But I tell you what, in the time that it takes Hergovic to hit you with one, Parker's hit you with three. And, and when I look at the foot speed... Especially that's what, that's what Wilder struggled with, right? Exactly. And especially when you compare the foot speed of Joseph Parker to Joe Joyce. Again, another thing is Joe Joyce is very much there to be hit. And he's a fighter, Joe Joyce, and he would admit this, that backs his chin in the moments to be able to, I'll take one to give one sort of thing because I'll <laughs> be tougher. Take to give two. Yeah, um, and, that's not, yeah, <laughs> and that's not something that Joseph Parker does. So I think that Joseph Parker will go in there under the guidance of Andy Lee with a very good game plan. I think he'll be very strict to that game plan. And I think that Joseph Parker is really going to opt to use that athleticism that he does have over Gilles Zhang. Are you not worried that with the slow feet, 
obviously he did come unstuck against uh, yep. Big Joe Joyce though. He did. Yeah. He did, yeah. And uh, and I think that Joe Joyce pretty much laid a blueprint out there That's what I'm to be able to zap the legs and tie I'm, I'm going bang zhang me. Mm. Like, I'm, I think that the, the, there was a, such a brutal, one of the most brutal displays of power. Mm. <laughs> like when you're known for having a great chin, and, and to be fair, uh, Big Joe Joyce did drop a lot of weight before that first fight. And that gave me the thought of, oh, have you just drained yourself to a point where you're now not able to take those level of shots? But then he put the weight back on. It didn't really fucking make a difference, right? And I, I, I said this about Francis Ngannou, um, and I'll say it about Zhang. He has that kind of power where he hits people and you're like, bah, fucking hell. Yeah. That looks violent, mate. Like, it doesn't look like a Tyson Fury beautiful display of boxing. It just looks violent. And when you make me feel that sort of emotion... I'm not picking mm. against you until someone really puts a dent in you. So, yeah, I'm picking uh, Zhang, but I definitely understand your thought process in the blueprint of moving around the bull. Yeah, mm. you, you've got to be... But I, I, my worry is, is I feel like Parker has to overperform more than and Zhang doesn't need to... I feel like Parker's got to be so careful. Is the mm. point? Yeah, it's it's he's so dangerous, Zhang. On the if he hits the wee, he's been hitting. Yeah, yeah. I think that also one one key thing I would say as well is the fitness trait of it. We have seen Zhang tire in fights, you know, like a, a, Parker a, seems to be getting really fit lately, and that's yeah. what I'm saying, you yeah. know. And and I think that he'll have the engine to be able to do that. I would not at all be surprised with a with a Zhang win. I also wouldn't be surprised, definitely as surprised as the public seems to maybe be with a Parker win. The winner of this fight are they the next best man in the division when we take away Usyk, AJ, and Fury. Because well, because who else would because you throw in there, bro. I mean, Wild, Wild I mean, does, I mean, Wilders took a loss. Yeah. To to uh, Joseph Parker very recently. Ruiz has done nothing I, lately. I would absolutely love Andy Ruiz. Like I would love nothing more than Andy Ruiz to be in this mix. And yeah, I feel so injustice that he's man. not in the mix. He's a lazy because, bastard, though, mate. Like mm. it's like I've just got no sympathy for fighters who don't actually pull their finger out and get in the fucking ring. Mm. That guy is so greedy when it comes to negotiations. The level of money, countless times he's had opportunities he's so delusional from the Anthony Joshua payday like I don't to, I don't put to him to rock in. up to the AJ rematch in the shape that he did and I'm not it's going on like fat, the man. casual fan thing of oh the shape he did you know Andy Ruiz is fat listen Andy Ruiz was off the back of the Dimitrenko win I think it was when he went into the AJ fight I think he'd fought about five weeks he had before back the back training camps yeah. exactly exactly yeah. and then to rock up in that sort of shape so I think that when you're looking around the borderline of the heavyweight division there's a lot of guys I think her Bergovic is the one you'd probably put in there. Um, but up until recently, Wilder, Joe Joyce, there's a lot of guys that now recently have taken losses and now you're looking at it different. I think the winner of this fight tells us who, with Hergovic, maybe is the next best man in the division. I think the winner of this fight could end up fighting the winner of the main event yep. because there's a rematch clause for Fury Usyk. Mm. So, providing they adhere to that which Fury says he's going to despite what we all have wondered about I think we could see yeah we could see Ngannou AJ match up with the winner of this and then the winner of that will fight for Undisputed again hopefully one man that was offered the Zhe Zhang fight if we're you know to believe what reports have said is Deontay Wilder now I know you haven't seen these quotes so I'm going to read them out to you Deontay Wilder he's got a bit of a bit of a history hasn't he of slightly delusional quotes when it comes to you know, what he said my, my, my favorite, losses. My favourite Wilder quote is, what's understood does not have to be explained. Shit like that. He said, I'd he said, like it if you could explain that. <laughs> he says things that, you know, what's seen mm. doesn't need to be understood. I don't, he says random things and mm. ultimately you just have to trust that in his head it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, well, it needs to make sense for yeah. someone. Let's try and make some sense of this. Deontay Wilder on his defeat to Joseph Parker. It was a boring fight. Nothing really happened. I went right back to training the next day. He really didn't do anything. They just went off the little flurries or whatever. In training for that, I had to travel two times, 20 hours of traveling. And those guys were already in Europe. They were only two and three hours away. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying what I had to go through. It was shite, wasn't it? it Can't was... say fairer than that, can you? He lost 
so much credibility in that one yeah. fight. He, he really did. And that, uh, he is going to have to work really hard to get that respect back, mm. big time. But just speaking about the fight there and saying it was a boring fight, nothing really happened. Well, fucking do something then. Pull your finger out and pull the trigger. He fought like a fanny. Like, yeah. if we're being honest, he was so scared in there. And that was mm. the thing that that level of hesitation has no business in a boxing ring. Yeah. Like, he looked scared to take a punch. Mm. And Parker's not the biggest puncher. So for him to say nothing happened, it's like, you did nothing, exactly. Mm. Like exactly and, what you uh, just said. Uh, also, when you talk about the travel factor, mate, we all know the Saudis are paying through the roof to have you on these cards. If you want Go to earlier. set up your camp in a different way, if you wanted to do and have the spread laid on that Tyson Fury's had in terms of being over there and having a training camp, I'm sure Turkey would sort you out of it. Turkey. So Shout out His Excellency. Yeah, so I, I, you know, you have to take that with a pinch of salt. Anyway, back while we're on the sort of heavyweight theme, anyway, back for Deontay Wilder. Ironically, a fight I would want to watch is Ruiz Wilder. Yeah. That's one on a undercard of a Fury Usyk, for example, that would whet the appetite big time. Mm. But and I'm not going to put any pressure on that because... I think we'd be in agreement here, but you can tell me if we're not. If Wilder comes back now, I only want to see him in a blockbuster. I don't want to see him build build his Fuck way off. back up. No, 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 no. We, we, no one... We, we've watched you for a whole career, mm. pad your fucking record. Yeah. We ain't got any... Now's not the time. Watching you lamp people who are fucking... Got no business being in there at the top level is not of interest to me. Mm. Either top fights or fuck off. Simple as that. 